speaking on behalf of every youth of this country, we are the building blocks of the future. We need guidance. We need mentors. We need a future. We need opportunities. We need growth. And we need to regain the things we have lost under the present dictator's reign. And we do this by one, putting God first, two, re-electing the party that will develop and reach out to the youth and restore our country. And this is the PLP. Thank you. I want you to put your hands together and welcome the next member of parliament for the East Grand Bahama constituency. Let's make some real noise for Tanisha Tynes. Bay, 
Fortune Key and Fortune Point, made a town, Smith's Point, Seahorse Village, Royal Bahamian Estates, and Coral Gardens. But that golden orb won't stop there. That rising golden sun will bring new energy to Marco City, Gregory Moss, Pine Ridge, Dr. Michael Darbo, It will bring vigor and strength to Central Grand Bahama, Julian Russell. And last, and by no means least, she will spread warmth and wealth in West Grand Bahama and Bimini. From east to west, Grand Bahama is going gold. East Grand Bahama, we have a long journey ahead. There is a well-known saying that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So. Step now and step in the right direction. Step with me. Vote PLP. Bring the water, hold the torch, tell the epidemic we can't take this no more. We will journey together and by and by, step by step. Together, with God's help, this island, our island, will be restored. PLP! 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 Bring the water, hold the torch, tell the epidemic can't take this no more. Bring the water, Tonight, hold the torch. We're gonna go into Pine Ridge because I believe the next member of parliament, Michael Dowell, will make way for one. Let's make noise for Michael Dowell, the next member of parliament for the Pine Ridge constituency. Keep the FNM out. Wow. To my honorable leader, Perry Gladstone, Christy. To the deputy leader, Mr. Philip Brave Davis, our party chairman, Mr. Bradley Roberts, all senior PLP officials, my colleagues from Nassau, PLPs from East to West Grand Bahama. Good evening. Keep the FNM out. Out and stay out. My God, look at the people! Grand Bahama gone goal! Tonight, I'm both happy and proud to be in West End to support my friend and colleague, Mr. O.B. Wilshire. Over the past five years, I have had the opportunity to work close with O.B. And let me assure you, he is solid as a rock! Keep the FNM out. Out and stay. He has shown nothing but real love and genuine concern for the people of the great constituency of West End and Bimini. PLPs, can I share with you my reason why I love the color gold so much and what it represents to me? G stands for giving. A party that puts Bahamians first and will continue to fight for the small man. O stands for optimistic. Yes, we are optimistic about the future with this country in the hands of the PLP. 
L stands for loving. We have a compassionate leader. One who cares about people and believe in Bahamians. And D stands for dynamic. Yes, we are a dynamic party. And we allow Bahamians to dream and dream big. By providing opportunities for growth and development throughout our country. Friends and supporters, I'm proud to be a part of this party with such a great history. And I'm humbled tonight to stand here in front of you in West End as your next representative for the great constituency of Pine Ridge. Brothers and sisters, I must admit that I'm very concerned about the future of Grand Bahama in the hands of Hubert Alexander Ingram for the next five years. Let me assure you that I will continue to fight. I will fight this battle to bring positive change to Grand Bahama and this nation. Friends and supporters, a few days ago, the statistics was released of the real unemployment figures on Grand Bahama. And let me confirm that the Progressive Liberal Party already knew that the unemployment rate on Grand Bahama has skyrocketed to 25%, the worst we have ever seen on this island. Reports have already confirmed that one out of every three young Grand Bahamians is now unemployed and have suffered under this FNM administration. Grand Bahama, do you remember 2007 when the same effing administration accused the PLP for doing nothing in Grand Bahama Keep and promised Bahama. promised Grand Bahamians 10,000 new jobs when they returned to office. Do you remember Mr. Ingram when he promised to reopen Royal Oasis 90 days 90 days after he returned to office. Well despite all of the promises in the last four and a half years, this same FNM administration failed to deliver for Grand Bahama. Even more disturbing is the fact that Mr. Ingram had the opportunity to do something tangible for us in Grand Bahama, but because of his personal vendetta, with one man at the Grand Bahama Port Authority. He intentionally held his hand back for me and you. How cold-hearted and arrogant can one man be because of politics? Now after reaping hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes from Grand Bahama for the past four and a half years, to fuel their special interest projects in Nassau and Abaco, and after throwing Mayor Crumbs, listen to me people, Mayor Crumbs off the cabinet table at the residence of Grand Bahama, they are back, they are back on Grand Bahama talking about love and trusted leadership. Man, they got to be joking. They should be on their knees begging the residents of Grand Bahama for forgiveness for four and a half years of lousy representation. But no, brothers and sisters, they are back on the road, knocking on doors, asking for a second chance. They are clueless, and they have no shame. Grand Bahama, I sincerely believe that the Progressive Liberal Party is the beacon of light. Pine Ridge! Pine Ridge, I love you! God bless you! God bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas! PLP! 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 Good night! We're going to Central Grand Bahama now. I want you to make some real noise. For Julian! Julian Russell! Let's hear it! Time for a story. Let me tell you all about this. Yes! BLB! 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 Hey, I wish you all could.
going to be up here tonight and see what I am seeing. And people are still coming. Uh, Mr. Party Leader and the next Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, Mr. Perry Gladstone Christie. Mr. Deputy Leader, Mr. Philip Brave Davis. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. We are here tonight to start the engine for this Progressive Liberal Party campaign on Grand Bahama. So Central Grand Bahama, are you ready? Grand Bahama and Bibney, are you ready? Are you ready for a new direction? Are you ready for a government that believes in the Bahamas? A government that believes in Bahamians? Then come with me and the PLP. The main issues surrounding this election for Central Grand Bahama are economy, jobs, health, and education. This election is about fairness and respect. It's about putting Bahamians first. It's not about looking back, but moving forward. Too many people are hating in Grand Bahamian. Many of these individuals have lost their jobs. In far too many instances, there are our entire family that have no employment at all. And most of these individuals represents the one prosperous middle class on Grand Bahama. They have made great sacrifices and worked hard to achieve their goals. And at the end of the day, they are being sent home without any hope of finding employment elsewhere. And some of them are even being boldly replaced by non Bahamians who are being granted work permits by this government for jobs that they have been doing for many years. PLPs! 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 And guess what? Then we have a large number of unemployed young people who are becoming more and more frustrated as they watch job opportunities that many of them are capable of performing being granted to non-Bahamians by the busload. Then on Fridays, we watch the long lines of these non-Bahamians at the banks while we watch long lines at Bahamians at social service. Something is very wrong with this picture and cannot be allowed to continue. Yet, in spite of these facts, this government continues to brag about what they've done for Grand Bahama and the Bahamas over the past few years and about their abilities to deliver. The PLP believes in Bahamas and we put Bahamians first. To our youth, I want to say, don't despair. Pursue your education with all your might. What you see going on today won't last always. It is the clearest and cleanest way out of this economic nightmare. We need you to be prepared to play a more prominent role in creating and shaping our destiny. See, some people believe in things. Some people believe things are more important than people. But we pledge to create 21st jo uh, century jobs and opportunities for you. So don't stop dreaming. Don't ever stop dreaming. Central Grand Bahama, if you believe, it's time to put Bahamians first. If you believe, it's time to invest in people. Then it's time to vote for Julian Russell and the PLP. The PLP is the party that created the middle class. It's the oldest party, but the one with the newest and most innovative ideas. It's the party that has as its leader, Mr. Perry Gladstone Christie, a compassionate man, 
He has assembled a new generation of leaders. He is a leader who believes in what Bahamians can accomplish. Tonight, I urge you to give your full support to the party that has the vision, that has a plan, and that has the ability to bring real change to Grand Bahama. That party, ladies and gentlemen, is the Progressive Liberal Party. And may God bless you. May God bless the Bahamas. PLB, all the way, PLB, all the way, PLB, all the way, so sad, so sad. So let's go to Marco City. I wonder why, I wonder why Chicago had to come to Nassau. Well, you better not land there. You better find someplace else to run. Because we're carrying all the seats in Nassau. And I know you're ready to carry Marco City. And so let's make some noise for the next member of parliament for Marco City. Let's welcome Gregory Moss. PLPs! Do you hear me, PLPs? I got two simple messages tonight. Bear with me because I have a message for that red party first. Then I got a message for you. The message for the red party is very simple. I didn't grow up in the biggest ghetto in Freeport to be scared of that man. I didn't have to eat out the garbage for four years to be scared of that man. Chicago Lang is gone. Norris Bean is gone. Cuban Ingram is gone. FNM is gone. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. I hear that man going around the Bahamas. Opening headquarters. Lying on my brothers and sisters. You open the headquarters tomorrow night in my constituency. My constituency. Lie all you want, but ring the bell. You're gone. You're gone. They're talking about five. Take five. Take five what? They want to take five more years of misery? Five more candidates in Grand Bahama don't care about people? You know they take five? Take five minutes to pack up your Georgie bundle and go. These people, these people got to go. We're talking about an unemployment rate, which is effectively about 22% for the whole country. For, uh, 22% for Grand Bahama, about 68% for the whole country. We're talking about our youth between 18 and 24, about 38% of them being unemployed. Is this a crisis to these guys? No, no, they got to go. We're talking about Bahamian aspirations being crumbled under these people. This man, this dictator, this Papa Doc gets up in Parliament and says we're going to sell BTC and Bahamians need not apply. He gets up and says if Bahamians run it, they'll run it in the ground in two years. Bahamians can't run a company. What is he doing trying to run a country? He got to go. You have this man coming and telling people that they are not good enough and his deputy, his deputy has the gall to come into Grand Bahama and say the problem with Grand Bahama is Grand Bahamians expect too much. They need to lower their expectations. This is what he said. He said, you got jobs. How come you all don't want to be on the dump truck? How come you all don't want to be maids in people's homes? That's what he said. And he is making millions on top of millions. And all he can think of for us is that we need to lower our expectations. My mother was a maid. There's nothing wrong with honest, un honest employment. But for you to come in my island and tell us we should expect less, you need to go too. Then we got, we got crazy and dark. I can just talk with crazy a little bit because I'm disappointed. The man is going to stand up and say, stand up and say, a, a, a promise is a comfort to a fool because he has no promises to make because they have no vision of how to fix this country and that is the message that is the message that we don't have anything to say to you and you should be happy we have nothing to say to you if you don't know how to fix the country get out get out ring the bell and you know I see Chicago get up and run my brother my brother, Dr. Rollins, in Nassau can take care of him. But you don't run and expect your, your, your substitute to do better than you. 
He ran because he was going to lose. North Spain is going to lose. Grand Bahama is going gold. Throughout Grand Bahama. And you know what really upsets me? These guys are bragging. Last year, bragging. Bragging that they made $44 million in one year in work permit fees. $44 million. Blood money. Jobs that Bahamians should have. They chose to give it to foreigners just so they could make work permit fees and have people out of work. No, man, that doesn't work. If that's all you can think about, you need to get out. But we have a vision for Grand Bahama. The PLP has a vision for Grand Bahama. We have published our vision for Grand Bahama. The Project Grand Bahama platform is clear. We are going to go and review every work permit in this country. Bahamians first. Bahamians first. We're going to make sure our own people are employed. We're going to make sure contracts go to Bahamians first. We're not going to try to stimulate the economy of Argentina. We're not going to try to stimulate the economy of China. Money is here and it should be spent on Bahamians first. That's what we're doing. That's a great difference. We understand what needs to be done in Grand Bahama. Don't tell me you don't know what to do. Do not tell me that you sat in Parliament in Nassau for four and a half years and decided you would not do anything for Grand Bahama because you dislike one man. One man. People lost their houses because you dislike one man. Families separated because you dislike one man. Please, man. People out of jobs because you dislike one man. People can't have power on because you dislike one man. You need to go. I want to encourage you all, do not be afraid of this man. This man has shown us exactly who he is. We know who he is, and he needs to go. Bottom line. So I'm going to leave you with this. Very simple. Marco City, I have heard you. Marco City, I have heard you. I have been in the houses, and I have heard you. I have heard the generators running at night because you can't afford electricity. I have heard you. I've been in the house with the woman who said to me, help me to believe again because my husband is in Nassau. I'm here. We're separated because he needs a job. Help me. I've heard you. We're coming. We're coming. I've been with the young man who said to me, listen, I don't want to do these things. I do. But I need a job because I have to eat out of my mother's pot. I can't buy her something if I want to. I don't want to live this life. But get me a job. I've heard you. We are coming. The PLP is coming. And this is not new to us. This is the same thing these people did in 2002. Bankrupted the economy and left it broken. And we fixed it. We're the ones who went in and created 22,000 jobs. We're the ones who went and brought investor confidence back. We're the ones who drove down the unemployment rate and left almost $3 million in the treasury when we left. We're the ones who understand how to do this. And this man will try to break up our middle class, our working class, our honest people. No! No, ring the bell. Ring it. Be a peace. Be a peace. Be a peace. Ring the water, hold the torch. I am so delighted tonight to welcome to this podium the next deputy prime minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I want you to make some real noise for our deputy leader, the Honorable Philip. It's a pleasure to be here in West End. It's a real pleasure to be here. You know, indeed, West End, you have, I'm here to support your candidate, your PLP candidate. And his name is Obadiah Hercules Welcome. And you know, Hercules and Brave go together. You can't be brave unless you have a Hercules in you. And you can't be Hercules unless you got some brave in you. And so I want to tell you all, that Hercules and Brave, you all should have. And you all should take rest in. I understand it is our law. It's indeed a pleasure to be here tonight. I want to ask you, are you ready? Rest in. I ask you, Grand Bahama, are you ready? My party leader, my colleagues in particular, Mr. Dan Gibson, who's here in the, in the house with us tonight. Mary Shane, he's here with us as well. Are you ready to get rid of this FNM, this uncaring, and this vindictive government? I need to hear you, West End. Are you ready? In fact, I want the FNM to 
hear you say that you are ready. And I want, I guess, Grand Bahama, we know just how bad things have been for you under this Ingram administration. This is virtually true. This is virtually true for all of the Bahamas. The pain, the suffering, and hardship have been more severe for you here in Grand Bahama than most in any other island in the Bahamas. And the truth of the matter is, this, the truth of the matter is, that this need not have been the case. You need not have been suffering the way you have been. Because I think, and I say to you, that it is because of Hubert Ingram, Papa Clown, his principal and intentional neglect of Grand Bahama, that you have suffered so much. He neglected this island for the past four plus years for personal reasons that still have not been fully explained to the Bahamian people. In fact, Ingram all but admitted at a press conference held in Freeport recently that Grand Bahama was neglected because of a personal feud he had with the Grand Bahama Port Authority. That feud came as a result of his refusal in December of 2009 to renew the work permit of one Hannes Babbitt, the then chairman of the Grand Bahama Port Authority. At that press conference, Ingram announced that he and Sir Jack Hayward, one of the principal owners of Grand Bahama Port Authority, were now on good terms because Babbitt was no longer an issue. No one man should be that important that the welfare of the residents of Grand Bahama should have depended on whether Hubert Ingram, Papa Clown, liked him or not. He was prepared to neglect and make a whole island suffer because of one man. But after having totally neglected the Grand Bahama, right, and now that election is imminent, right around the corner, he's trying to fool you once again, trying to lull you into forgetting that the vindictiveness that was visited upon Grand Bahama was primarily responsible for most of the pain and suffering that you have had to endure. You would have noticed that in recent weeks that even announced the start of several projects, again, promises, promises, promises. The construction of a new fire station in Freeport was just announced. He certainly must think that you Grand Bahamians are fool and stupid. A few Let's, let me tell you, let's remember, this is what I'm saying, Grand Bahamians, and to the Bahamians under the sound of my voice, right? A few weeks of promises cannot make up for the five years of hurt and pain and suffering that you've undergone. You hear what I'm saying? A few weeks of promises cannot make up for five years of suffering that you've had. You must let Papa Clown know that such election ploys will not make you forget that he, uh, forget his vindictive policies that were responsible for your pain and suffering here in Grand Bahama. You must let him know that his spiteful policies towards Grand Bahama are mainly responsible for the island's outrageously high unemployment. You must let him know that his mean, mean-spirited mean policies are responsible that for the decimation of the middle class sector in Grand Bahama. You must let him know that you cannot forget that although the FNM has five Grand Bahama MPs, three of whom were in cabinet, they remain totally silent as he, Papa Clown, neglected Grand Bahama. You must let him know that the country's economy overall will not be in the poor shape it is in if we're not mismanaged by himself as Minister of Finance and his Minister of State, Shivago Monavi Line. Yes, Grand Bahama, you must let him know that you are sick and tired of their bad governance and will vote them out in the next election. Surely things could have been so different in a positive way for Grand Bahama if Ingram had lived up to his promises he made shortly after they came to power in 2007. Back then, they told you how much potential you had, how much they loved you, how, would, how they would never leave you, and how much they needed you. In fact, in 2007, at the opening of international distributors in Freeport, Ingram said, the rate of unemployment 
and unemployment in Grand Bahama is inexcusable. So if unemployment was inexcusable then, what the hell it is now? At that time, at the same time, and at that same event, Ingram also promised we will bring Freeport back. Well, fast forward to now, and the evidence is quite clear that conditions in Grand Bahama are far worse than when the FLM returned to power in 2007. Grand Bahama, this election will be the most serious that we have seen in perhaps a generation. There's so much at stake. There's so much to lose. These are serious times, and serious times call for serious leaders. This is no time for shocking and jiving. This is no time for slack talk and loose thinking. That brand of politics has passed and is no longer relevant. Yet, Papa Clown has taken off his prime ministerial hat for that, for that, for that of petty, simple-minded gestures. His silliness shows, knows no bounds, and he will sink to any level. He has no shame. The stakes are high, PLPs, and those other fellows know it. PLPs in Grand Bahama, I cannot stress enough the importance of these elections. Just remember, in five short years, the FNM has been in power. We have not only seen record murders, record unemployment, record national debt, but even more seriously than what we have seen, erosion of the average Bahamian's social standing. Bahamians are being devalued in the Bahamas. In these five short years, thousands of people have been evicted from their homes and thousands have fallen back into poverty that their grandparents and parents worked so hard to out of for generations ago and two or more. This is the Bahamas that Ingram has delivered and no amount of money that he'll pour in this campaign will chase this back. Grand Bahama, it is time to do that thing. We ask you to go out and register now. We remind you and let's remind them of the heartache a parent feels when they have to stand outside with their child in order for them to do their homework under the street lights. Ours is a serious task. Bahamians are counting on us. They are counting on us to restore them to what was stripped away from them. Yes, BLPs, they are counting on us to restore good governance to our beloved country. We must not let the Bahamian people down. With your help, Grand Bahama, we shall not let them down. Grand Bahama, are you ready for Obadiah, Hercules, Wilska? Grand Bahama, are you ready for this Category 5 storm that's going to take out the FNM? Grand Bahama, I say come with us as we restore our country back on track to where it belongs. And as you know, we in the, in the PLP believe in Bahamians and we believe in the Bahamas. PLPs! 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 God bless you! God bless West End!
the people of Bimini and Kati Hannah Hill in Pinedale Russell Martin in Jonestown Seagrape in Pine Forest Holmes Rock and Dedmas Reef Bahama Beach for all the people who've given me an opportunity. I come knowing the teachings of my father and my mother that everything you do in life, do it to help others more than to help yourself. And even though there are some times that we fall short, I will never stop trying. I will never stop helping because the people of my constituency in the Bahamas, I love you! It is so good to have my brothers and sisters here in the West tonight. We represent a team and we are building our party. I want Julian Russell to know that I support him. I want Tisha Tons to know that I support her. I want my friend Greg Moss to know that I have his hand. And I want my good friend and Senator Michael Dobble to know that I am with you all the way.
and soar across the fiery forces to defeat those and those circumstances that will pull us down, devour and destroy us. All that we have earned as a people and we fight because we have an indomitable spirit, a spirit that says, I believe. As a people, we have proven to the naysayers and the pundits that we can achieve anything we want to. Many doubted the strength of our people because they only looked at the size of our country, but they never looked and measured the size of our hearts and the magnitude of our determination. A determination that says, I believe. When they said we could not achieve majority rule, we did because we believe. When they said the people of the Bahamas could not achieve independence, we did because we believe. And even when they said that we could not win a gold medal at the Olympics, we did because we believe. Here in West Grand Bahama, when the forces of Francis, Jean, and Wilma ripped apart our lives, we did not stay down. We got up because we believe. We believe then as we believe now that weeping may endure it for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Separately and collectively, the people of Grand Bahama are in pain. No matter the political side you're on, if you're F and M or DNA, you've got to admit that things are dead bad in Grand Bahama. The large majority of the people here are catching hell. Thousands of young men and thousands of young women want to work, but there are no jobs. And so they must stand on the welfare line. I tell them tonight that keep your heads up and don't be ashamed. Because as the monkey said, when they cut his tail, it ain't long now. In West Grand Bahama, we are planning now for the future. And I want my people to understand that this election is about the future. We will initiate an aggressive program to immediately create some construction jobs in West Grand Bahama. Our program must be aggressive so that West Grand Bahama, from Bartlett Hill to West End, could and would become a modern city community. We will complete the Boodle Bay Housing Division and we will put a park there where it's supposed to be. We will start new housing divisions in Denman Street and also in Holmes Rock. Pelican Lake will become a scenic beauty. The bushes will be cleared and a wonder of the world will be exposed. And I want you to know that no longer will we sit down and let them build schools in Freeport and build those schools in West Grand Bahama. We will build new high schools, we will build new primary schools, an IT center, and we will build sports facilities in West Grand Bahama. And as I said to you the other day, the Friendship Shopping Center will be purchased and we will build a state-of-the-art West Grand Bahama administrative complex. All of those things will happen as we change that highway from Queens Highway and we will call it the Salindian Pin Lane Highway.
business today and those who want a business tomorrow. In West Grand Bahama, I want you to know that we will be moving to give you duty-free concessions for your businesses so that you can bring in your vehicles and start your businesses. We must catch up with Freeport. Freeport has had the concessions since 1955, almost 60 years ago. It's time we get ours, West End. I believe the time is now. And I want tonight to say thank you to the churches in West Grand Bahama. I've seen your work. I've seen what you have done in these bad economic times. I've seen how you've helped the homeless, how you've fed the hungry, and how you've encouraged the youth. We as a nation must be grateful. I will seek, as a PLP MP, to cause for legislation, for faith-based legislation, to allow for our churches to get across the board duty-free concessions for their expansions, for their vehicles, and for items related to their ministry. We must always remember that without the grace of God, the prayer of God's shepherd, the shouts of songs and praise, our nation would be worse off today than it is now. And we have to show the church that we believe in the church and the work that the church has been doing and we must give them all the support that they deserve. Men and women who proudly built their homes and moved up the social strata of this island, and now they're down. And I know that they feel very bad tonight. Many have lost their homes, and who've lost their homes, I know you're living in darkness, and many don't have water, but I want you to know that yes, you may have lost your homes, but you're not out of the game. Don't believe that you've lost everything that is over because it's not over. You may be down today, but you're not out. Because if you vote for the PLP and you believe, we will find a plan to help you. And I want you to know that in West Grand Bahama, we will take that urban renewal program in all those areas in Seagrape and Jonestown and Pinedale, all those areas where we have homes that need work, where we have infrastructure that need work, we're going to fix those and cause for those areas to be improved so the property value can grow up, so that the home value can grow up, and so that the environment will become better. We will do so through the Urban Renewal Program. West Grand Bahama, I want you to know that we're not talking about same old, same old. We're talking about something new because I believe. And West Grand Bahama will be anchored by a first-class hotel right here in West End, with a first-class airport right here in West End, with a first-class golf course right here in West End because we will welcome people from all over the world. There will be charter services, there'll be scheduled services, and you see this beautiful harbor? We're gonna dredge this harbor so that it can look like and be like and even improve over what we've done in Bimini. We will cause you to have business sustainable here in West Grand Bahama. I want all of you to know that I want our island of Grand Bahama to return to that promised land, to put the magic back into Freeport, and to cause some soul again to ride high in the city of Grand Bahama and in the city of Freeport in particular. We can no longer allow this island to remain the way it is. And that is why I say to Papa, Papa, there's nothing wrong. You've given the people of, Grand ba of New Providence some leverage. Those who have their power cut off You've allowed them to put the power on, and you've worked a deal for them. That's all good, but what about the people of Grand Bahama? What about a plan for us here? We lost our power too, and they're cutting off our water now. So why haven't you given us a plan? I beg you, give us one. And if you don't give it to us now, well, I know somebody who will in just a short period of time. So give it to us now, or you can get it later. These general elections are for the future of this nation. These elections will determine Bahamian people if we sink or if we swim, if we rise or if we fall flat, if we soar again 
or we settle on being a people who are dependent and not independent. These elections will decide if we get back on course to nation building, to it can become the city and a country that is the envy of the Western world and become players around the table of global political, social, and economic scholarship. We can, the Bahamian people know that we can. We can if we believe. And I want you to remember that we have proven to the world many times before that we can soar. In West Grand Bahama, when Cardi Arrol of West End emerged as a four-point student to become the number one student on Grand Bahama, she did so because she worked hard and because she believed. And all the people, all young people know that we can achieve if you work hard and you believe. When our Bahamians became Royal Scholars, they did so because they worked hard and because they believed. When Michael Thompson and Rick Fox wore the Lakers basketball uniform and won championships, they did so because they worked hard and because they believed. When Dennis Preacher Hall, Ad Coma, and Ernest Ambrister, all of my constituency, when they stood up to those who did not want taxi drivers on the streets of Freeport, they did so with conviction because they believe and look today anybody could drive on the streets of Freeport because of the work that they did. And that is why tonight I ask you, custom officers, the FNM government treated you badly. So why go with them? Come with us, the PLP. Let's fix what they did wrong. Taxi drivers and hotel workers, the PLP extends a hand to you so that we can rebuild tourism and we can believe again. Police and Defense Force officers, let us work together so that we can believe and we can clean up our streets and restore law and order and return this nation to an island of peace and stability. We must believe. And I also want my friend, Verna Grant, she is my friend. I believe, Verna, you still have some work to do. And so why don't you come join us and be a part of us and we will show you that we believe. Young men, and we have many young men here tonight, I call on you, put down your weapons and arm yourselves with a desire to work and become the role models that your children in this country expect of you. Let us today begin to walk together and let us believe again. All Bahamians, it's time for us to believe again. We must believe in ourselves and in our country. This same Bahamas that came a long way and that has lost some direction. It is time now for a new day. It is time now for a new PLP government. It is time now for us to say, FNM, goodbye, PLP, welcome, and let us move our country forward. PLPs, Bahamians everywhere, in times like these, ideas, creativity, and vision will move our nation and our people forward. We don't have to cuss nobody. We don't have to say nothing nasty about nobody. We can move this country forward with ideas, with creativity, with innovation, and with a plan for tomorrow. Our people want a message that will arouse their spirits, soften their hearts, and resonate with love and hope. Our leader, our leader, the leader of the Progressive Liberal Party, has learned that no matter how many times you slap him, he's going to turn the other cheek. He has learned, and our leader knows, that the stone that the builders rejected will once again become that chief cornerstone. Our leader, our leader, is blessed with the oratorical skills of Paul, the charisma of Prince Charming, the heart of Mother Teresa, and that indomitable Bahamian spirit. Our leader has learned that it is not the weight of the race that counts, what counts is the strength of his conviction and the determination of his head, his heart, and his soul. Our leader, the Honorable Perry Gladstone Christie, has the soul. He has weathered the storms and he has been in the valley. 
He has scaled the rough side of the mountains. He has been through the fire, but he's been protected by the armor of God. He walked through the valley and to the valley of the shadow of death, but was comforted by thy rod and by thy staff. People of Grand Bahama, leaders are chosen. They are anointed, they are tested, and they are made ready. I want tonight here in West End, with thousands of people looking, with thousands of people here, I am presenting a man of character, a man of integrity, a man with a heart of love and a belief, and he believes deeply that every behavior deserves a second chance. which believes in Bahamians. Are you ready to vote OB and the PLP? You are, listen, there are some people here Goodness. And I, let me just say this. I am also told that all over, right in Harbor Island, there are assembled before a big, big screen watching you here in West End. Hello, Harbor Island. But listen now. I want to know. Are you ready for OB and the PLP? PLP, all the way, PLP, all the way, PLP, all the way. You, you are going to lead the way, Grand Bahama. In 2012, the FNM is going to have a collision with reality. And it's going to start right here in Grand Bahama. You're ready for a new direction. Ready for a government that will put Bahamians first. Ready for a government that will invest in people. I have spent a lot of time with the beautiful people of Grand Bahama. And I have seen a lot of lives brought low in a very short period of time. There is just too much pain here. Can you hear me? There is just too much pain here, my brothers and sisters. Too many proud members of the middle class slipping back into poverty. Grand Bahama is hurting, suffering, suffering from nearly five years of almost unthinkable neglect. Did the FNM government ever have a plan for creating jobs here? Well, if they did, if they did have a jobs plan, it wasn't a jobs plan for Bahamians. 
after presiding over the most shocking mismanagement of the economy in Grand Bahama in our nation's history, the Prime Minister has the audacity to ask you for your vote. They should be asking you for forgiveness, Grand Bahama, not asking you for your votes. And you've heard the quote, now listen to me now, you've heard the quote, Sound and fury signifying nothing. That's a pretty good description of the FNM campaign so far. Listen to me now. Lots of noise, lots of lies, no new ideas. For the PLP, we have been promoting serious, innovative ideas to fight crime, reduce violence and create jobs since the summer of last year. But the FNM doesn't have a serious or innovative ideas. All they have is their tired, old, discredited attacks on PLPs. Speaking of which, the other night the Prime Minister said that the PLP likes to reap, not to sow. You know this, Grand Bahama, if this is the Prime Minister doing his best to win your support, it is not a very impressive sight because nobody believes that. But when he denigrates my government's accomplishments, he denigrates the many great Bahamians who worked by my side, who contributed their talents and vision and hard work to their country. And so really, I cannot let his dishonest comment pass. Listen to me tonight. We in the PLP created 22,000 jobs. Yes, we did. And in fact, that's a conservative estimate. Mr. Prime Minister, put your reading glasses on. Look at the labor survey of the Department of Statistics. Look at the hiring at Atlantis Phase 3. Look at the hiring at Albany and second chance programs after the employment moratorium. You can look it up. We created that many jobs and more. But that's not all. We built 1,400 homes and a record number of classrooms. And we invested tens of millions in Bahamian entrepreneurs. When I left office, unemployment was at 7.6%, and we were leaders in the region. In 2007, we had big accomplishments and big projects underway. Do you remember when the Prime Minister officially opened the brewery? He himself, in a rare moment of candor, admitted that some people sow and others reap the benefits. The Bahamas Brewery Limited was approved and 90% completed under my watch. The FNM reaped some $40 million in stamp taxes from the sale of Vopac after much work and due diligence on the buyer was completed and approval for the sale granted by my government. The FNM reaped the benefits of the construction of the northern campus of the College of the Bahamas here in Grand Bahama. My government sowed the seeds to expand educational opportunities for thousands of Bahamians. As a matter of fact, the seeds of most fruits being harvested and claimed by the FNM government in our economy was sown by my administration. Listen, they say we have done nothing. But you know, the Ginsomer Anchor Project right here in West End, where it come from? It came from us. The I Group Anchor Project in Maguana the national stadium that they open next week. The national stadium came right from this head. 
And when you see them celebrating it next week, think of the fact that when I was Prime Minister, having been an international athlete, I decided to give the gift of a new stadium by asking the Chinese to build it for us. Hubert Ingram just sat down and watched it build. Now he will go into that stadium and say, look what we did. My foot, look what I did. Look what the PLP did. Bahama, where did it come from? The 400 million Linden Pendling International Airport Project. Where do you think it came from? When the FNM took office, when the FNM took office, they realized they had a problem. They realized that all these projects were PLP projects. They couldn't take any credit for them. And they didn't have any ideas of their own. So what did they do? In, in many cases, they delayed PLP projects and contracts. They came up with phony excuses for why they were doing, the, why they were delaying it. But it really was all about politics, plain and simple, F and M politics. Now, can you imagine that they did this even as the global recession was tightening its grip on the Bahamian economy? When Bahamians needed jobs more than ever, the F and M stopped or delayed projects for political reasons. The International Rating Agency, Standard & Poor's, said that the FNM decision to delay contracts had a direct impact on the Bahamian economy. We didn't say it. Standard & Poor's said it. And that's only one of the many ways this Bahamians need not apply FNM made the recession worse and mismanaged the economy. Now, you know for yourselves in Grand Bahama that Hubert Ingram has been stewing in his feuds and vendettas instead of putting you first, having temper tantrums instead of leading the way on jobs. Listen to me tonight. One in three people and young people are out of work. One in three young people are out of work. Unemployment in Grand Bahama is well over 20%. The middle class is decimated. A list of foreclosures, people losing their homes, is miles long. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. Not to mention their terrible and tragic failure on crime and violence. Just as I was walking to this platform, I was being told by police officers that a major crime has just occurred in New Providence where someone was murdered tonight. And I say, I can't call it now because it just happened, but great God Almighty, this government has so manifestly failed to keep people safe in this country that they need to go and to go now. They need to go and they need to go now. They dismantle, they dismantle urban renewal, swift justice, witness protection. They dismantle them and put nothing in their place. Listen, you've heard it. Murders have doubled on their watch. More than 443 murdered, but fewer than 25 convicted. 443 murdered, fewer than 25 convicted. As many as 305 accused of murder out on bail. And Ingram said when he came to Parliament in 2007, if this ever happened, he'll hang his head in shame. Well, listen, well, my damn, he should hang everything in shame. Listen, Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama, we can and will do so much better as a nation when you elect 
the PLP to be the next government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I know that you'll visit our website to learn more about our plans to fight crime and to create jobs nationwide. So I can turn my attention now to our plans for Grand Bahama. Tonight you've heard our colleagues speak. You've heard about Project Grand Bahama from some of us. But let me highlight again for you some key provisions. A policy of putting Bahamians first with real enforcement for existing protections for Bahamian workers, increased work permit fees for jobs where Bahamians are qualified to perform them, and a, when putting in place a plan, a plan to move aggressively to fill job vacancies with qualified Bahamians. The PLP is committed to establishing a ministry for Grand Bahama. This will ensure that Grand Bahama's development receives the focused, specialized attention it deserves. As for tourism, we need to make Grand Bahama more competitive. We will, as a new government, cut government taxes at the airport and harbor in half. Cut hotel taxes by 50% for a period of five years for existing hotels and 10 years for new hotels. We will ensure that duty-free concessions, listen to this now, we will ensure that duty-free concessions will be extended to East Grand Bahama and to West Grand Bahama. We will encourage, we will encourage and support Bahamians who want to build and own bed and breakfast guest houses, who want to build and own boutique hotels and small resorts. And we will support them with affordable startup capital, affordable land, technical support, and marketing expertise. As part of our commitment to doubling the investment in education, we will expand the presence of BTVI in Grand Bahama in addition to developing new public-private partnerships to establish technology centers for education and training of our people. Given the importance of the listed initiatives, and the critical role the Grand Bahama Port Authority plays in this country and on this island. I'm going to say something very, very important and of critical importance to the Prime Minister, to the Hayward family, to the St. George family, and to you, the people of Grand Bahama. And I say tonight, I respectfully ask that the Grand Bahama Port Authority defer the appointment of a new executive chairman until after the general elections. Hubert Ingram has squandered his five-year mandate and it is unseemly for him to approve a new chairman on the eve of general election. It must not happen. Ladies and gentlemen, I have assembled a team of experience and the ideas and energy of a new generation to assist me in rebuilding Grand Bahama and indeed the Bahamas. Nowhere have I demonstrated this mixture than right here in Grand Bahama with the experience of O.V. Wilskum in the West and the youth and dynamism of Tunisia Times in the East. 
Julian Russell in Central Grand Bahama, Greg Moss in Marco City, and Senator Dr. Michael Darvel in Pine Ridge complete a group of extraordinary candidates ready to work for you on day one. I am here tonight for the Hercules Obadiah, if you please. Obadiah Hercules Welcome, who has been a valued member of my team. In tourism in 2004, we hit the five million mark in arrivals for the first time in history. We also hit the two billion dollar mark in tourism revenue in 2004 and sustained it in 2005 and in 2006. Listen to me tonight. We can achieve big things again. We were able to attract JetBlue, Spirit, Virgin Atlantic to the Bahamas, thereby increasing airlift. Airlift was also dramatically increased to the family islands. West Grand Bahama, we did it before. And I've come tonight to assure you that we will do it again. I need you, therefore, I need you to get registered and to vote OB and the PLP because we believe in Bahamians. Together, listen to me, together we will rebuild Grand Bahama and create the opportunities you, the people of Grand Bahama, need to lift yourselves up and return West End and other parts of Grand Bahama back to the glory days. And for you in West End, you were once the capital. And we've come here tonight to tell you that once again, we will bring back the glory days in West End just as they were when you were the capital in Grand Bahama. Can I count on you, Grand Bahama? Do you believe in Bahamians the way we do? Are you voting for Obi and the PLP? Are you voting for Tanisha? Are you voting for Darvel? Are you voting for Moss? PLP! People stop work, start cell phone time. Happy brother, I'm in my push and time. 